Hey guys. So we arrived. <laughs> we are in Alaska. Um, it is what, like 10 o'clock at night right now? 10.30. 10.30. And it is a beautiful, glorious, <laughs> sunny day. Um, so um, this is just kind of a, a update, I guess, on how we are doing and, and what we are doing and why we're doing it. Um, so we left from Coors Gold, uh, California, um, what, two weeks ago? Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. We, we've, been, we've been here now two weeks just trying to get stuff set up and haven't really done much. And it took us a nine-day trip driving I-5 on the West Coast and then the Alcan Highway and then through Alaska. Long trip. Very long trip. Four kids and a dog. This dog, Martha May. Um, and uh, it went really well. It was surprisingly, it surprisingly went well. We, we went... Ah, Alaska mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. <laughs> oh, the struggle is real. The thing was huge. Oh, man. Um, so, so we, uh, we prepared for everything, basically. We had a flat tire repair kit. We had um, walkie-talkies. We had all kinds of stuff. And we pretty much used almost all of it, right? I think. We had didn't didn't use the repair kit. Really nice Canadian guy repaired some tires for me. But uh, well, anyways, we could just we're gonna just gonna talk about the trip. What do you want to? Well, brief overview. Uh, but well. Yes. So uh, we had what five flat tires. Let's start from the beginning. If you're gonna do that. Okay, true. We um, left on a Thursday, so I got my Ford Excursion and my F-150. They're both 20 plus years old. Um, the F-150 had 234,000 miles at the start of the trip. I took them, took them to, to my mechanic, had them checked out. Everything seemed pretty well, so I was like, all right, we're going to risk it. So my excursion was pulling a 16-foot flatbed trailer that I built a box on. All said and done, the trailer weighed about 8,500 pounds. And then the F-150 was hauling a U-Haul trailer that weighed about 5,500 pounds. Um, plus a dog plus a dog in the back and a friend of mine drove up with us he drove the f-150 and but so we left on a thursday by thursday night we, we were in we stayed in medford oregon and then friday night we made it to some town in washington south of seattle where we yeah. camped and it was we, we planned on staying in staying in the tents and stuff it was raining the first night Martha was going crazy, so I slept in the back of the truck with her in the kennel. And then Whitney and the kids slept in the excursion. And we ended up sleeping in the trucks almost every night just because it was bad weather. It was it was a little earlier in the season than we had kind of wanted to go. But at the same time, just the timing of the sale of our house and just everything, we just had to make it happen, like, that week. So, um, so yeah it was rainy for sure and it wasn't worth setting up the tent for the most part um and a lot of times we didn't even set it up because even if it was dry at the time it was going to rain later so we decided not to pack a soaking wet tent um but the kids had a great time they slept in the excursion the whole time and they loved it it was like they were packed in there like little sardines it was great um so benefits of a huge truck yeah <laughs> yes but so what was it Day, so Saturday, day three, yeah, we crossed the border into Canada. Customs that was interesting. Was interesting. They, I they, they were they were fair and they were very polite. I will say that. Yeah. It just it it went okay. It worked out. We just we just should have been more organized um, oh. with our our information. So I um, I ship I shipped my guns up because I knew it was going to be rough. But I'd called ahead to Canadian Customs, and they said you could take your ammo no problem. So originally, I had my gun safe with just my empty gun cases and my a ammo in it at the very back of the trailer, so easy access. Because weight distribution, we had to move stuff around, and it ended up like in the front. last minute move stuff around. Like the night before we were leaving, I was packing, repacking the trailers. Yeah. But so the gun safe ended up being way towards the front of the trailer, and we get to Customs. They ask if they had any guns. I say no. I shipped them. I show them proof, and we told them to go park, and then they're searching, and then after searching for a bit, 
three of them come inside, call me off around the corner. What? <laughs> we don't want to get too negative here. Well, they, they gave me the shakedown. I, I thought it was going in cuffs. <laughs> the Canadians are very serious about their gun situation. So Apparently. take their seriousness seriously. <laughs> yeah. um, and just be very clear as to what you have and what you don't have when you go through Canada. But all in all, it wasn't a terrible experience. We just had oh. to repack our trailer in a, like a parking lot stall. And it, yeah, that was interesting. They, they were not rude. I understand they what, were not. I understand what yeah. they were doing. They have their laws and their rules. And it's stuff. their country. They, they wanted to make sure we didn't have any guns. And I had, I had my gun safe and then like two or three small little coated gun safes that they found and they and I had not told them I had the smaller ones so I didn't think about it they were empty so then they were one of the officers was a, seemed a little upset that I I don't I don't know anyways but it worked we out made it through the point is <laughs> it went it took about two hours which honestly wasn't that bad um and they were for the most part pretty polite and they were polite they were that Canadian polite, you know, and so, um, but once we got in and once we got through, everything went smoothly as far as like, you know, getting well, in and out of the I country. I would say though, Canadian drivers are like super polite. Nicest people ever. <laughs> when they're driving. It's like so nice. You turn your blinker on and people actually slow down and let you, let you merge in. And that doesn't happen around. in California. No. <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyway. So we made it over the border and we stayed that night in Kamloops, British Columbia. Which, this that going down the hill into Kamloops, there was a big grade, and I stopped at the top of it to use the bathroom, and then the excursion would not start, which was scary. Yes. But um, got it started. We get down to Kamloops, and then I started kind of trying to figure out what it was. We ended up staying there. Sunday. That was Saturday, Saturday night. night. We stayed there all day Sunday because I was worried about the truck, and but found out it was just a couple of loose uh, bolts in the steering column that just wouldn't let it register. It was in gear, so I. Once I figured that out, it was 10 minutes. I tightened them up and it was fine. But so we. So that was a pretty easy fix, and that wasn't something that, you know, we could have seen coming, but it's just something that on a trip this long is just going to kind of rattle loose and eventually, you know, it's going to yeah. cause some kind of problem. But anyway, so it was an easy fix. So that was Sunday. And then the rest of the trip was just kind of go, go, go. Well, um, then we started hitting weather. At, well, yeah. colder weather. We started getting up in elevation and way up north. And after Kamloops, we went to Chetwind, which it got down that night to like 28 and windy. It was really, really windy. I think, I think that was probably our hardest night because it was so windy and because we were camping. So, you know, trying to light the, the little propane canister stove to oh. get dinner cooked well, and stuff. And I, um, Whitney and the kids were in the truck and I tried sleeping in the tent with... Martha May, <laughs> but like one in the morning or something, the wind was like almost tipping the tent over, and I, I, so it, was I was, it was like slapping it into you. I was, <laughs> so I end up getting up and putting Martha in the truck, and then getting in the truck myself, and it was. But and then I will say that there were some crazy steep grades though in Canada. I think we we hit, we hit like some eleven percent grades, and there was the, one eleven percent grade with an I overweight trailer. It was a little it's scary. Scary sometimes. Scary, very scary. There oh, were times when I just kind of had to close my eyes and just you know let what will be will be. Well, there, there was times I could I could I was happy if I maintained thirty five miles an hour going up the hills. Um, yeah, but we made it. But um, that's the trick. So, just take it day by day. It's a long trip. You just got to kind of yeah. let it happen. Monday Monday night was Chetwind. And then Tuesday, the drive to Fort Nelson, Canada, which... <laughs> that one was interesting. There is lots of short but very steep grades very up and down. Steep. And very by steep. midday, I could feel my trailer brakes were a little mm, not working so well. So I actually yeah. pulled over. The sign said steep grade ahead. Check your brakes for trucks. So I, we pulled over and check my, check my brakes and my friend and I... We're trying to adjust the brakes on the trailer. We realized that the trailer brakes were gone. There was like, nothing to adjust. <laughs> there was nothing there. So I call around, try to get some re repair shops, and they all say they're out two weeks. But um, they had the parts. So we could do it. So I very slowly and in first gear limp it down this like 9% grade for yes. miles. down Very into, long 9% grade. Down Gosh. to uh, Fort Taylor where I went to a repair shop. 
and Canadian hospitality, I guess, again. They said they were backed up. They couldn't see me, but the guy... Come in anyway, and we'll see what we can do. And then he had us re- fix, and he had new brakes and drums and everything on the trailer in about two, two and a half hours, and we were yep. back on the road. It was incredible. Those guys were amazing. So we made it to Fort Nelson that night, which... First time ever seen the Northern Lights. Ah, that was really beautiful. Okay, I will say through the entire trip, yes, it was difficult. Yes, it was hard, but the scenery was worth it. Almost worth it. <laughs> no, it was worth it. Um, the nor- the I mean, just the mountain views, the the huge um, open like panoramic views of stuff, and then yes, the Northern Lights yeah. um, were amazing. Oh, Saved you. also. Didn't know that you get into Canada. When was it? Um, after the day after Kamloops, I think going to Chetland, mm. like the first half of the day. It's like you're in the American Southwest. Oh yeah. Like high desert. High desert. It was weird. It was like scrub brush and stuff. I it was. Like that. It was. I mean. There was cattle ranches and everything. I was yeah. Like, hey. It looked like. Stepped into Arizona suddenly. Midwestern America. Yeah. It was. It was beautiful, and we loved it. And amazing barns. Oh, they were so pretty. Mm. Um. But, but yeah, so after Fort Nelson, Fort Nelson, the, and the Northern Lights. The day after leave, so we left Fort Nelson, yeah. and f- forecast was calling for snow ahead of us and ice and everything. So we left a little bit later, trying to let the ice burn off, and going. I think there was Summit Lake Pass and another pass, and yeah, we had snow falling on us a couple times. I was worried about yep. about it and stuff, but luckily never stuck on the road. Um, just, it just made it wet, yeah. which wasn't so which, too bad. That's when we started seeing frozen lakes still. And then I started panicking about what I'm going to get in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> there was definitely a change in mood the next couple of days because yeah. the further north we got, the more we could see that there was still a lot of snow on the ground. A lot of snow in the water, a lot of frozen lakes, a lot of just... Ice flows on the rivers still. Yes, and- big big ice flows <laughs> so that kind of prepared us um by the time we got to oh, no, that day was hard because we were we were hoping to get to white horse didn't think we were going to make it because we left later oh and yeah. we pulled into the town of teslin in the yukon at about 10 10 30 at night and just found a turnout and pulled over and parked which we weren't the only one there was like four there's or a five few other people. vehicles <laughs> Just parked on the side of the road yeah. and slept in the cars that night. We actually went into Teslin and I called ahead, um, but they didn't have it's like, you know, it's a really small town, so they didn't have Both any hotels. hotels. Were booked. Yep, no RV spots, no hotels, and so we kind of went in. We looked around and we just kind of oh. found a spot that would work for us. Um, that was probably other than the wind in Washington. I think that was the hardest night because we were all so tired. And um, we, you know, I mean, I just set up the kids and just put them to bed. And it was like, everybody was just exhausted that whole day. So that morning was a little rough, just kind of getting going again. It was cold, you know, but, um, but, you know, we just kept pushing forward, you know, and then we got to... Toke, Alaska, which that that day, so the day after we left Teslin, we hit, um, and we'd been told, I'd talked to some truckers and talked to some locals up there. Everyone's super friendly when you just ask them for... Oh, yeah. When you're on the trip, ask people, like truckers and stuff, in little truck stops or rest stops, whatever. Just ask them what the road conditions are like because they seriously have their finger on the pulse of those roads. And they know. And, like, for construction or what's going on, just, like, ask them. They're more than happy. If you're, you know, friendly, they're more than happy to help. And we had the 22-mile post uh, guidebook, which is helpful, but... Yes, very helpful. Conditions changed when, when we were in Tesla and we got gas and I, I heard a trucker saying, talking to another guy that he had just left, uh, I think Fairbanks the day before. So he's, the roads we were just going to take. So I, I asked him and told him come what we were doing. He said, yeah, the roads are clear. The ice is already melted off. He said, but um, told him about Destruction Bay, which I had not heard about. Which is aptly named. <laughs> yes. A section of Canadian Highway. I forgot which, what highway it is. But, um, <laughs> Uh, northwest of Whitehorse before you get to Beaver Creek and he said when they when the sign says 25 they mean 25 and I guess it's because of the the permafrost and how it freezes and thaws the road gets really bumpy washerboardy where it's up and down and up and down and And short bursts yeah 
and just and the asphalt just gets broken up from the from the frost and it was awful. I know sections when if I wasn't paying attention and you don't see the sign or something and you hit it, the trailer's in the air and yeah, people's heads hitting the top of the car. <laughs> it was it was rough for sure, and a lot of potholes, a lot of um, what are they called frost. Frost heaves, heaves, I think the book yeah, called it. Frost heaves. Yeah. Um, and a so. lot of just rough roads, like gravel sections out of nowhere. Just yeah. and the, and there'd be like a sign that says gravel ahead, but it would be like twenty feet, not even. <laughs> so it's like break now, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So um, so definitely it, it definitely helped to have somebody shotgun to riding shotgun to yeah. you know keep both eyes out, but. It's it's just intense and it's exhausting because you're you know you're relying a lot on the brakes you're you know yeah, moving around it's tough especially on the, the tough on the truck and trailer because you're on the brake then you're accelerating again and then you're trying to downshift and it, it's tough on them to just yeah. check your oil I check oil if every like every other day basically in the morning mm -hmm. um, but we got through Destruction Bay and then the very last town in Canada was Beaver Creek which as we pulled into Beaver Creek. <laughs> Trailer tire blow. So, uh, first it exploded. Of, first and only actual <laughs> blowout we had. And it's funny, there was some guy on the side of walking his dog, and then I hear something, and he kind of jumps. I was like, and then I hear the thump, 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 thump. So, pulled over. But that time, that was the fourth tire change that Andy and I had done, and it took eh, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, a last uh, Canadian, uh, Royal Canadian Mountain Police actually was, and he drove by, and he like pulls up next to us, like, you guys have the tools you need? We're like, yeah. He's like, okay, call if you don't, <laughs> and left. So, <laughs> so very helpful, you know, you know. If you don't need help, then carry on. <laughs> yeah. But so we got that, that changed. Oh, and also in Beaver Creek, Martha got got away. Oh, just for a hot minute. She just took off. She wasn't having a great time in the oh, little that, kennel this thing. Was, what, seven days in the truck so yeah, far? Yeah, she was so done with that. But she so she tried girl. to take off on us. But she came right back when we called her, so that yeah. was nice. I guess she still loves us. <laughs> Um, and right, then, uh, it's never, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> but, um, so <laughs> crossing the border back into Alaska was huh. easy, <laughs> very easy. Our, um, American side is, is very, um, okay. Go later. permissive, forgiving. They're just like, Hey, how you doing? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Bye. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we were kind of hassling the guy. <laughs> He didn't want to hear that we had apples or anything else. He's like, I don't care. Just go. Cool. So um, so it actually worked out really well. We just Marcus. cruised right in. And uh, baby. We just cruised right in and then got to the other side, the American side yeah. of that same yeah. highway, which was still pretty rough. Um, yeah, it, coming it was in. decent. Yeah, it, it got a little bit better. Um, there was markings on the road. That was nice. They're actually like yeah. lane markings. A lot of Canadian roads. You Canadians, cannot see the, the white and yellow They don't line. worry it's about like, it. I, They're just like, well, it's cool. I think they were there, but it's just... No, I don't think they were. And sometimes I could see little leftovers. They were but, just like, hey, you know, so, figure it out. A lot of times it'd be like a, like two lanes going the same direction, and I do not know if I'm nope. in the... I don't know just guess. <laughs> and then someone passes me and I'm like, okay, I guess there's two lanes. <laughs> I guess there's a lane over there. But, um, that was, but so yeah, markings on the road, that was yeah. nice. So well, we made it to Toke, Alaska. Mm -hmm. And by this time it's, we were, it's, it was late. Well, yeah, but it's still sunny, which is, it yeah. was getting weird for us. It was but, um, very we found, weird. found a hotel in Toke that allowed dogs. So we all got a nice sleep and a shower and, and showers and like take out for dinner. That was, that, that was nice. cool. It was an easy night. Definitely. It was yeah. comfortable. So that was Thursday. After that. So uh, we had some technical difficulties with the last video. So we kind of put this in. Um, we're not professional camera people at all. So yeah, no. there's that. But anyway, um, so, so basically, you know, we're in Alaska and it worked out. <laughs> we're here. We just got back from the property actually um, when we were filming last night and then filming now. Um, between then we went to the property and had a look at everything and really got in to it. We um, 
pruned back a lot of the growth. There's just a lot of willows and tons of devil's club, which is as noxious and horrible as it sounds. Um, and so we cut back a bunch of that and we actually made like a little trail into the property and then a loop kind of in the middle-ish of the property to kind of give us a, a, a sample of the terrain for the whole thing. It's only one acre. Um, like 1.16 acres so it's really small and it's um, you know it's not a ton of space to work with but um, ultimately it's the size that we need and it's Mom, perfect I right yeah I know it's fine yes. it's gas go inside John no yes, yes we, we know it's okay <laughs> you can't okay. So anyway, um, and so we went to the property and uh, it was good. It was really good. It's just, you know, there's a little bit more like wetlands than we they were expecting. For you, really? um, but at the same time, it's workable and it's okay. Um, so, <laughs> Close the door. so, so we'll be fine. Um, and uh, anyway, so. Part of this whole thing is also why we are doing this, and because she wanted to. He said to move to Alaska, and I said no, <laughs> and and you know my mind was changed. But um, no, but so you know when we were at the property, I was thinking, oh man, it's you know it's one acre. We're used to four acres. We're used to tons of you know rolling hills and all this stuff. And then I realized, you know, but the difference is, yeah, it's one acre, but we own it. So we... No, actually, no. No, no candy. I think they open the door. Okay. We'll get there. No. Go okay. ahead. Okay, so anyway, um, so we, um, you know, we, we own this piece of property. And that's very different from having a mortgage on a piece of property. Um, when we had a mortgage, we had a beautiful house and there was nothing, you know, wrong with it. It was perfectly nice. Um, but it wasn't ours. It was the bank's. <laughs> and we paid dearly every month for the pleasure and privilege of living on that property. Um, and, you know, even though it's it's a home ownership and they say you own it and all that, you know, it, it was always in the back of our minds that this is a mortgaged piece of property um, and this is debt, ultimately. And so with the property here, yes, it's smaller and, you know, it's, it's a little swampy here and there and you gotta kind of pick and choose where you wanna build and stuff. But the important thing is that we actually own it. What is going, going on? on? I need to go after a change. You just want to get out. No, honey, just, no, it's because we're talking. So just take your back, please. Okay. Okay. So, having a mortgage property is very different from owning a piece of property. Um, and so we, we own something. And this is the first time in both of our lives that we've ever actually owned land not mortgaged not leased not rented it is owned mm -hmm. um and yeah and we also i was getting tired of the utility bills and the dependence on other systems basically i mean the utility company gets sued or whatever else for something that happened hundreds of miles away from us and yet our bill goes up for nothing that i can control so we yeah. Just wanted to live as free, free as possible, not independent. being independent. Yeah, independent, off government. As off I government. Call it. <laughs> he calls it off government, which I think is is very descriptive of it. Because the thing is, you know, it's not like we're against utilities or against washer and dryers. And, oh, I'd you love know. to have hot water on tap. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. But I don't want to pay for it. But to us, it's not worth it. That's the difference. It's like all those conveniences, we started to realize all those conveniences have strings attached to them. Yes, you can have the running water, sure, that, you know, comes from the city, but the string is you can't control what's in it. You're going to have the chlorine, you're going to have the, you know, whatever chemicals they decide are healthy for you. 
um, and you're going to pay for it and you're going to pay for everything else that goes with it and um, you know and that was it's not necessarily the, that those things are bad it's just that we decided that the convenience was not worth the strings definitely paying the bill of course is one of the very big strings mm -hmm. um, and so we decided we wanted something that was more on our terms so if we want a dishwasher yeah go get a huge solar array <laughs> to run a dishwasher you can do it but or if you really want to we can hook up to the city utilities and stuff here and it's all it's all here and available yeah it is and if you want it they'll hook it up you just got to pay for it and then you got a monthly bill and everything else if we don't want that don't have to have it yeah so, so. that that was basically the the reason one of the big reasons why we decided to make this move was because we just wanted the option to not be a part of it if we didn't want to. Um, and who knows, we, we might get on the grid later, you know, 10 years down the road, we get tired of taking uh, showers with the, the, the kettle of hot water, you know. Yeah. We might, but for right now, we're just enjoying the fact that we have the option not to. <laughs> um, so there was that, and then... Um, you know, and a lot of people asked if we made this move because of politics. And honestly, it, it really wasn't. Politics will follow you wherever you go. It doesn't matter. You know, there's going to be something or someone or some policy that you disagree with anywhere you go. So politics and, and all that stuff had very little to do with our choices. Um, Alaska was really appealing because they're very uh, pro-homeschool and um, a little bit more in line with our way of thinking as far as like the permits and stuff go and and the restrictions and stuff on private property um but you know that could change with one one governor or something you know yeah. so um it wasn't like all those things made the choice for us um but mostly i think most of the reason was really the affordability of land right affordability of land availability of water yeah. And then just that... Tons and tons of off-grid water. We can build without uh, pulling permits for everything up here and stuff. As long as, in some places, I mean, it's it's a state, like, politics are everywhere. So some cities have permits, some places have permits, some counties have permits. Yeah. But where we're at... Um, we're just outside the city limits. Yeah, you don't so, need permits to build. Yeah. You still need permits for some things if you're going to build a road or something. Or, you know, set is. up a, a, a restaurant or something. Yeah. A business. But uh, just to build your own little residential cabin, there's no permits required. No permits. And and that's the thing, too, is um, the kind of hands-off nature of the government here, we found very appealing because um, we're, we're okay to govern ourselves, right? <laughs> we can figure that out. Yep. Um, anyway, so, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of hopefully answers some of you guys' questions about the... The, uh, what was it, the what, the how, and the why uh, that we did. Yeah. <laughs> so, something like that. The, the crazy. The crazy. The, it's crazy. And and we totally understand that we're in over our heads. Like, every time we face some little issue, we're like, wow, we really are in over our heads. That's okay. But once we've kind of come to grips with that <laughs> and we, just decided two, it's okay. Two weeks, ago, two weeks ago, our property was under about three feet of snow still. And today we get in there and half of it's a swamp. <laughs> not half, not half. A third. A third. A third is a swamp. And uh, it's, yeah. So lots of fill dirt, lots of gravel, lots of prayer. Trenching. 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 Um, but the thing is. But there is a good building spot already there. Nice exactly. Nice and level spot. There and is usable land and it will work out. And for goodness sakes, if it doesn't, we just buy another piece of land. <laughs> it's so cheap out here. Just save up for a couple years and buy another piece of land. So either way, it'll be fine. Right? Mm hmm Yes. So guys, I hope that uh, answers the questions and yeah, get out and do something cool. Oh, I'll just show you my chickens really quickly. Okay, we ordered chicks and I will show them to you because they're adorable. These are in a fish coat, in case you're wondering. A very, very nice person at the local feed store out here. Um, heard that I had some chicks and I was rushing out to the hardware store trying to get some wood to start making a little thing because uh, the chicks came like five days earlier than I was expecting and he's like oh I think I'm gonna have a fish tote for you sure enough delivers this behemoth it is it is huge but under all this 
It's a fish tote with insulation and 36 chickens. <laughs> there they are. Yep. We got barred rocks because they're really cold tolerant and buff orpingtons because they're awesome. They're good mamas. They're good everything. So, and they're just hanging out and we got the heater for them. So they have plenty of place to, to get warm and cozy. And um, we lock it up at night so the mink don't eat all of them <laughs> so, or the bears or anything else that, or the dogs, anything else that comes along. So yeah. Speaking of dog, there's Martha. Oh my goodness. Wondering what we're doing. Anyway. So yeah, um, so that is, it's a little heavy, but that's a good thing because it keeps the critters out. Oh, there we go. Anyway, so yeah guys, hope this inspires you. <laughs>